Welcome back guys to my channel Mystic Sensation and as you know you know we are in the kitchen and while doing so we like to you know deal with the topic yeah so the thing is you know wife and I we just got home from work and we are dealing with some kitchen relationships simple means in a help out moms 50-50 like kitchen you understand? She will be doing the meat and I will be doing the food. So, right about now, I just needed my dumpling here, and that is combined with so on calming. Because I love a little calming in my team, you know. You understand? That's how we work with it. You understand, Nasa? So, I do the food, then I need the dumpling, and Definitely deal with the food and moms, you know, we deal with the meat. A 50 50, we agree, I say it got, you understand, and that's, you know, sort of relationship. You make sure say, the culture that, you understand, and, you know, the most of all, well, the full of you. So, man doesn't feel burdened to come home and do all of the cooking, you understand. Yeah, we help out, you understand, 50 50. And you know, would I encourage other guys to you know help out your wife, man, do do some of the homework as it go. So today topic, you know, we want to discuss what we call juvenile delinquency because as it relates to Jamaica, you know, and we are a lot of youth between the ages of 10 and 18 right committed crime already booked in the judiciary system right so you know in terms of breach in terms of you know um, the criminal offenses and you know it becomes a pain that when they go through the penal system what seems to be you know coming back as a ripple effect or a domino effect to us is that there is no rehabilitation through the process and so the penal system deals with more of punishment more than rehabilitation so the topic today as it relates to juvenile delinquency is that as parents i believe that Parents need to sharp in terms of identifying when you have troubled children, right? And try to make sure that they try to fix that situation before it reaches, you know, um, the penal system and try to see how much we can help to correct the behavior as it relates to juvenile delinquency, right? So, well, you know, I'm going the dumpling, right, and put it in the pot. I mean, you want to show them how I put it in the pot and so forth, you know? We are discussing what, you know? Yeah, so the thing is, some of the things are some of the issues that can cause juvenile delinquency is one, first and foremost for me is the environment, right? Because depending on the environment of which the child right, grows up in, then the environment can have such an influence on the child. And particularly, we are talking about children in trouble areas or trouble communities, or you want to call it garrisons, garrison communities. Because this is where most of our um, delinquency statistics draw from, from the trouble community, right? But when you look at that, you realize that, okay, the environment first and foremost is what affects the child. Depending on the parents that that child 
right, hazard that children are those, sorry, those children have, right, is as a very significant factor. So if the children, and remember, I remember my saying, say the children never fly far from the block, which is so true. So that simply means that if the parents are not culturing or nurturing the child or the children in the way how you know we talk about moral application, right? To be a law abiding citizen, then you have a problem with that. Right? So it has to take good parenting. Particularly we're gonna find yourself in these trouble areas to make sure that you navigate your child or your children's future, right? Away from to be categorized as a juvenile a juvenile delinquent child. Right? Yeah. So there are certain signs that you know you have to look out for. Right? And the obvious one is the child being disobedient most of the times. The child having problems at schools. Right? So when you have those indicators, then you know you have to deal with it. And make sure you follow up on them things there. You understand? So if the child is not performing good at school, you yeah, have a conversation with the teacher, right? And find out why the child is not performing. If your child used to carry, right, some high grades or good grades, so to speak, and the child dropped, right? Get on top of that and try to, right, find out, you know, what is the cause of that. Have constant dialogue. Right, with teachers, because if you notice, to me, who come from the ghetto, right, I start to realize that you don't have too much teacher parents relationship. And so then, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of children, right, lost in between, and what they lose is the education. The parents, are not putting the adequate input into the child learning, right? And they left everything on the teachers to do. So when the parents send the child or children to school, that's it. They don't follow up on the homework and so forth, right? And so far, that is to me lacking in a certain responsibility. So you have to make sure that Okay, as a parent, right, your parenting is solid. Because remember, you know, it's not every mother or father a good parent. You can tell her that. You understand? So, with that being said, right, parents need to of the necessary focus, right? In terms of that. What do you think about that, honey? In terms of parenting. What do you think about parenting? You know, give them some of your ideas now. Hi guys, good evening. Welcome back to our channel, as my husband said. Um, remember the Trinity, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Turn on the post notification bell so each time we post, then you can get notification as to when we upload a video. Well, as my husband said, um, that you know, time parents are not so involved in their children's day-to-day um, -day activities with schoolwork and stuff like that. But I'm also saying that you have very good parents who try their best with their kids, but because of peer pressure outside, the home and um, friends that they choose to link with, then sometimes they may get themselves in trouble. Not that the parents are not doing what they're supposed to do. A lot of the time the parents are doing what they're supposed to do, but because they might have to work extra hours sometimes and you know, whatever, sometimes the kids get caught up with friends 
and then friends influence them in the wrong way not that they don't know right from wrong but a lot of the times you just want to be in a clique and you want to be cool or you want your friend to see you in a certain light to say that okay um you know you're a role with a crowd and then you end up now do the wrong thing because you're following what the crowd is doing and then you get yourself in trouble so i wouldn't put all of it on bad parenting or whatever there is there is the positive side in terms of parenting and there's also negative side in terms of parenting so a lot of the times parents try their best but kids will be kids most times you just have to try and guide them in the right way and direction that they should go and i'm not an expert on this topic this is just my opinion on it so i'm just putting that disclaimer out there i'm not a expert in this field although i'm in the medic the healthcare field but um yeah that is just my my take on it so this evening um as my husband said we not too long got home from work so he's just cooking some um food as we call it generally in jamaica so that is going to be consisting of some um dumplings and irish potato and i am going to be doing some um oxtail so i've gone ahead and put some powdered seasoning on so basically i put just put some maggie on there um some onion powder um all purpose chicken seasoning and some chicken seasoning that i put up at walmart that i normally put on my chicken when i'm grilling it it makes it gives it a really good flavor um i'll show you guys um that maybe in another video or in a little bit because i've already put that back in the pantry where my husband was talking to you so i'm just gonna get some um natural seasoning together just the onion the um onion tomato and all of those stuff to cut up so i'm just gonna turn this back over to baron and then he can continue on his um on his topic there guys talk yes. to him a bit yes you know you are, as uh, my wife said um that you know um, her opinion towards the situation is subjective and quite so you understand because i mean you know for me though is that I am just saying that to say that parents need to be laser focused, right, on their children to identify certain behavior that reaches out of pattern, right? So you know that the child behave a particular way and certain things and, you know, your culture, your child, you understand, in terms of a particular behavior. And then you observe any form of nuances, right? then of course you want to investigate so that's good parents right you want to your, your, your child is feeling in his or her grades right um the child you know you observe a child having some sort of attitudes that are negative of course you want to get into the meat of the matter right and deal with it so for me i try to use what you call a shock light matrix right in terms of the child reaching the amber light or the child reaching red you understand we don't have any form of discussion to debate when a child is in the green because obviously that child is a disciplined child right so when you see the child is in that amber state that is when you want to get in that space and have an understanding of what is going on because for the child to keep that red light, it simply means now that the penal system, right, has now absorbed that child. That child has been identified now by the penal system and probably processed. Now, that now child now fit into now juvenile delinquency, right? So before your child becomes that or fall into that category, you have to try to identify those indicators. You understand that you want to save a child or navigate a child away right, from being juvenile delinquent. 
right? Whatever programs that, you know, and you, and again, if you are laser focused on your, on your child or your children, then you need to have that communication because the key in all of this is communication. <coughs> how much are you communicating as a parent to the teacher? And how much, right, you have that sort of parent teacher relationship, right? So you have a better understanding, you know, you know, of the child behavior at home, and you also have a better understanding of the child behavior at school. Because for that child to now absorb in the category of ju juvenile delinquent and probably processing through the penal system. For me, identifying Jamaica penal system, what people need to know, that the system itself, for me, and let me say this, this is subjective, right? Because it is not like, you know, I'm just talking from might be just looking from outside, you understand, and try to criticize the situation as best in terms of what I see and I am analyzing. That the system itself don't really deal with rehabilitation, right? So a child commits a crime, put it this way, a child commits a crime, an offense. right? Or an offense, right? And I've now gone through the penal system. How the penal system put that child into a 180 degree angle. <laughs> Simple means that what sort of programs that are in place to change the mindset of that child? How can you, and this goes for the general prison population, because at the end of the day, right, if the penal system only focus on punishment, then you're going to have a lot of repeat offenders. Because we are only have the penal system focusing on punishment alone. Let me say that. Then you have a problem. Because, say for example, let me give you an example. Someone get five years in prison, do a crime and then get five years in prison. And he sits in prison for five years doing nothing. And then, remember, you know, we might link up with prison. We might link up with in a prison. Are prisoners who have done wrong, who have broken the law, and that is the reason why they are all there. So there is a set of mindset that is there that I can say are the anything positive is going to come from that. Unless a man, you know, um, and very rarely it happened that um, you know few prisoners might do some intros introspection and decide say well you're going on i don't like the i don't like the part that my life is traveling you understand and start of have that intrinsic influence you understand to influence himself you understand and can navigate himself away from that but remember you link up with some some set of thieves in a prison put it the layman terms a set of criminals in a prison right Oh, they give you some extrinsic influence. You're getting influence now from outside. External influences. Right? They're not going to tell you anything good. So when you spend five days in a prison, you understand how you come back out. But you come back out, come do. Now, I believe that Jamaica government can solve some of the problems if you have real structural programs. To train persons in prison, you understand, and put them into a system that can be able to function. So what I'm saying, I'm talking about, okay, a man do something, a man go to prison, and he spend five years in a prison, but he also spend five years learning a particular skill that can come back, you understand, and becomes positive in a society. You understand, a better carpenter, you understand, you know, whatever, you know, um, workshops are there, you understand, to mobilize them when they are spending five years, and some of them spend 10 years 
Because face it, I'm on 25, then 10, 10 years, and now I'm on skills. When I come back out of prison, come do. Think of it. You understand? He's not coming back to do anything positive to society. And remember, say, I'm to survive out there. Now. You understand? Because the struggle is real. Remember, the struggle is real. You understand? I might be him have you before him go to prison to you know. And him come back and now go and see him. Him not have no skill. Let me your guess. What do you think he's going to do? Think of it. More your comment down at the bottom. What do you think he is going to go back to? Because to him, he must eat the food and he you them have to survive and him have to survive. So remember, he spent five years this up and he now have no skills, no training. So you know what happened now? If we are doing within the penal system that when persons are serving their time, are doing their punishment simultaneously, they are learning the skills so that when they come back out and of course the government need to legislate you understand because we have to do things with common sense you know the government need to legislate that look when a man come from prison do a prison do, do five years five years in a prison and him gain a skills in prison and i'm come back out so to make it a way that his record doesn't affect him simply means that within the process try, try to make a mandatory thing that okay is employable because again him come back out and many employer out there should not come from prison they're not employed so if no look at put in with common sense see if all the employer them reject the man what am i ever do Think of it. If all of the employers say, no, a prisoner you come from, you understand? Me not give you no work. What the man have to do? not getting a second chance, so. He's not getting a chance. So the rehabilitation bed cut off. You understand? And so then we want the program to work inside prison and outside of the prison. So if a man rehabilitate in a prison and there's a certificate to show or to prove his rehabilitation process. Then, when he apply, the application is supposed to be honored. And the things the government has to work with private sectors in terms of, you know, making, you understand, such policy implement so that, you understand, the flow can run. Because at the end of the day, what is the objective? The objective is to reduce to make a crime situation. Many of you them who you know resort back to crime. Right? Let, let, let us face the fact. Many of them who are going back and forth to prison really and truly has very limited choices. Think of it. You know, all the people might bash me, you know. But when you empathize and you sympathize with the situation, and you put yourself in the person's shoes, hmm? right? And say, okay, all right, put it this way. If me do something, then I mean, you go to prison. And now I'll have the opportunity lights locked off, turned off. And when I do like a five years or whatever years I have done in prison. I'm going to come back out and I can't get no work. How do I survive? Tell me. So, we might resort to the animal instinct. Yeah? We might resort to the animal instinct. Hunt, kill, and survive. I don't tell nobody to do that now. So, I don't want no persons, you understand, misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if certain systems set in place and that system right is objectively built on a result or designed for a particular result, 
then you are going to get that result because that is the formula. Yeah. Just like, I mean, to solve a math problem, you have, a, you have to have a particular formula. You understand? To find the area of a rectangle, yeah, let multiply by with, you understand? And that is an expected result that is going to come. So if you set a particular formula, if the government, if the system set a particular formula, so that rehabilitation is not possible, then you are going to get the result of the formula. And that is what I suspect of the system. And we need to change that formula to get a better result. Simply mean put policies in place so that you understand we can make sure that, okay, a person go to prison, we don't write him out. That person can come back out you understand? And might be going to prison getting skilled. You understand? Because while he was there, he was able to have the introspection there. And he have a skills now where he can depend on and he can survive off and skill. You understand? Him leg of the gun thing. That he want, man. You understand? That he want, you know. We want the gun thing to let go. Let me take a sip of my verbal. You know what I mean? Always run the bourbon. So, wifey, what do you think about what I'm saying? Come talk to the people, you know, because the people want to hear it, you know. You understand? What do you think about the rehabilitation process, honey? Talk to the people, you know. Tell me what you think about the rehabilitation process. So, things that what I said is right or wrong. What is your opinion on it? Well, what you're saying is um, totally right. Um, and it's constructive criticism based on what we observe over the years in Jamaica. And yeah, if they put system in place where they can get rehabilitation and even get an education, because a lot of them who go to prison face it. Some can read and write. Yeah. So if they learn to read and write mm -hmm. and get an education, because they're not only skills, some of them have the brain power, but they never get the chance to yeah. excel because a lot of people, when they go to certain um, business place for a job, based on the address that they put on their application, they are turned away which is so wrong. You cannot judge somebody by their street or home address. And we need to stop that. This is 2021. That thing needs to stop. Don't judge people because of their street address that they put on an application. Judge the person based off what they're able to do, what they're bringing to the table, what they're able to contribute to the building of your, 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 your um, business or to your business um, continued success then. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if somebody is in the penal system, not everybody wants to be there, but because of circumstances, because that's not where anybody in their right mind would want to be. But because of circumstances, you have people ending up in the penal system. And as my husband said, there doesn't seem to be any sort of rehabilitation. It's just crime punishment. and punishment. You do the crime, you get the punishment to do your time walk. What's out there for them after that? What are they going to do? There's no system that says, okay, all right, if you are a, you, you, you do a menial crime then, it's not a big offense, right? There is, um, you're employable in terms of, we have these business places that will take you once you have done your time and leave and we hook you up with these persons yes, and you are able to work and get a little money in your pocket so that you don't have to come back into the system. There's nothing, nothing at all. So what are they supposed to do? It's just a vicious cycle that a lot of them get caught in because once you um, commit an offense, it's like it's used against you for life. Yes. It's so used true. against you for life. So there's no forgiveness, there's no um, rehabilitation, there's nothing. So these people find themselves in a vicious cycle and a lot of them don't really want to be in it. Right? They, they, they did something wrong, they learn from it, but it keeps following them, following them, and then they have no other choice but to continue doing or even do worse because there's no way of surviving because the one little mistake that they made 
it just use as a beating stick over their heads for the rest of their lives. So they keep going, it's like a revolving door. They keep going in and out of prison. As soon as they come out, they're back in. And then um, society look at them as being bad. A lot of them are not bad, but because they just don't have any other choice. You made a mistake, you learn from your mistake, but society don't let you forget. And that's a big, pro that's a big part of the problem. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, as my wife rightly said and spoke about the revolving door. So, and this is what this program is all about. We discuss topics. And not only that, we discuss topics. We brainstorm it, right? And offering some sort of idea, right, as to guiding persons as to, you know, how to divert away from certain situations, right? So when we talk about, and we look at the system because we see that, of course, it has to be a revolving door. In terms of Jamaica crime statistics, it speaks for itself. You understand? To judging back 10 years, you see the rise of the crime situation getting from bad to worse and from worse to worst, right? And it seems that there is no answer for that. There is no answer for that because you have a domino effect. The domino effect comes in in terms of you have to build from the community. So let us talk about good structure. Right? So we are on the delinquent, the juvenile delinquency. Right? Because the youths are what we need to mold properly. For them to be future parents and future leaders. So the youths live what they learn and influence by their own environment. Right? So then, if the environment is spewing out poison, then the youths are going to be contaminated by the poison that the community is spewing out. It takes a community to grow a child, trust me. So when we lack in terms of that, the, let me tell you something. In the, you know, early 70s and 80s, the way of me grew the way of me culture, if me a pass, me said, John Brown, yard, I said, Mr. John Brown in a yard, the courtesy instilling me to say, good morning, Mr. John Brown. You understand and pass on the courtesy to him. Nowadays it seems like there's something they're the lacking. Gone are the days when, you know, we might detect the whole shuttle bus and we have a seat, but an old lady or an old man comes there, right? We can get up from out of his seat and say, Mommy, sit. You know, the farmer caring there. Just gone. You understand that, sir? With a sweet, sweet Jamaica there. So we are talking I'm about it here. Anymore. Right? So, we could just stick back in terms of the target that we are dealing with today, juvenile delinquency, because we have to save and preserve the youths to build the future. And this is my idea in terms of reasoning this particular topic today. You understand? Preserving children, the children for the future tomorrow, because they will be the parents of tomorrow, right? And so then, what do we want these parents, right, these potential parents to be? We have to pass on the information downwards, right, and the good information so that they can take this information, right, and pass it on to future generations. You understand? We have to win back Jamaica, you understand? So then, look here. We build it from the structure within. Within the household, that the house need to have that good moral right capacity. You understand? To teach the good things. And the community itself, you understand, need to read itself from certain. Each persons in the community, you have to have the sort of sharing there, you know. 
you understand, and caring, everyone in the particular community look out for each other. So if me, see Mr. Tom Jones' um, child, our children, they get involved in certain things that, you know, socially unacceptable, then of course, me, I'm go I am going to pass on the communication to, you know, Mr. Tom, and tell him, say, well, boy, I see children, no, Mr. Andre, blah, 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 blah. You understand, because we want the child, or his children, you understand, to take the good part. So, guess what? To all of the crime situation, the present crime situation in Jamaica, right now, all of us need to own it. You, me, all of us need to take responsibility. All of us need to be blamed in some way or the other in terms of, all right, we need to, who need to speak out, speak out. Who need to execute the good ways, execute the good ways, right? Who need to, when a wrong is committed, they don't shield it. You understand? Because we have several problems that you know. You understand? Including from the home, right? The son go mash a work, son. You understand? He go rob somebody and might kill the person. We need to identify certain things. You understand? Make sure so we check our youth, preserve our youth, because we don't want the youth to reach the red light. And as a parent, we need to identify. You understand? When they hit the hamba. So when they hit the hamba, then they trigger certain sort of behavior. You understand? Have a conversation with the, um, with the child. Our children. Try to find out what is happening. You understand? Start to have the parents teachers relationship. Many, many communities in Jamaica. Parents, I am telling you, a lot of parents don't have that solid parent and teacher's relationship. And that is where a lot of breakdown happen. That is where a lot of breakdown happen. You understand? Build parents, parents and teachers relationship. Build it. Because remember what you have there, if you don't realize, are two parents executing duties. So when the child is at home, right? Yes, the child biological parents, you understand, have the responsibility to nurture and care for the child. Now, remember when the child departs at home and go to school or go to whatever institution, right? The teachers have that responsibility, you understand, to make sure you understand that they nurture the child and the children within the educational system. You understand what I say? But trust me, teachers are too much overburdened because a lot of us parents just leave up everything for the teacher. Who knows they are true, to man? Who knows they are true? There are some parents who want them, who want them um, students, who want them children to go to the best high school. The top high school. But ask yourself the question. How many times you sit with them doing your homework? How many times you labor with them through the process? How many times you help them as a parent? And how many times you communicate with the teacher? And how many times you do your following up? Right? How many times you do your following up? You, but you don't participate. But you want a, you want a son or you want a daughter to pass to the best high school and your participation is non-existent. That can't happen. That can't happen. And a certain thing go. Remember nation building we are dealing with it now. Right? And one of the reasons why Jamaica have so many crim criminals is to the fact that they lack the capacity, they lack certain skills to get a good job. And the only thing what they know is to take up the gun. You understand me? I said, I, I hope to stop it, right? Sort of, you know, giving some energy to some parents, influencing some parents. You understand? To have that bond between themselves and the teachers, teacher parents relationship. And it must be consistent, right? Not because when I say it you now, and you're, you know, you sort of, you know, have it consistently. Let it be consistent. This is a method 
that it needs to apply when you have that teacher, right, and parent relationship, right? So then you've been alert, 100% focused on your child's future. Remember, the future is important. We have to preserve our children to have a better future. I'm out. See you next time.